welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a bit of a book haul because I did receive an order of non-fiction books in May. Then I bought one fiction volume and then I bought some manga. So I kind of just wanted to share that with you today. And the non-fiction, let's start with the non-fiction because I've actually already read one and I'm almost done with another one. So I'll show you the one that was in my recent uh, uh, book reads, uh, May book reads video, and that is The Hidden History of Burma, A Crisis of Race and Capitalism by Tant Meet You. And I probably am pronouncing, mispronouncing that name just because I'm not familiar with Burmese names. But uh, this book basically explores Burma. <laughs> it basically, um, he describes how Burma was uh, created as a country, as a nation. Then he goes into the concept of the British colonial, colonial, colonialism and the effects of the British colonialism um, within Burma. Then how China came in and then basically it leads into the military uh, forming its own government, uh, kicking out any sort of chances at democracy. How the military, uh, the, how the military then uh, dissolved basically itself and basically the the rise of Aung San Suu Kyi and basically goes all the way up to the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic but ends uh, right before the most current uh, military coup um, where she has been kicked out and they had ta they have taken back over the country so yeah I mean incredibly super relevant to what's going on right now this explores this, this explores this in the most fascinating way, you know, using this concept of Burmese nation, nationalism, the idea of cat, uh, capitalism and economic freedom within the country, while also giving you a look at why the why the situation is so much more complicated than just the hashtag Free Burma. Like it, it's not that easy. It's not. It's not the situation that Western portrays of it. And he's very insistent on that. He really wants foreign policies to understand this is the real Burma. This is what's really, really happening. What you guys are trying to present within Western media is not exactly what's happening. And basically what you've done up to now has really, really hurt our country. So incredibly fascinating. This book is wonderful. Um, I talked about it in my May Reads wrap up and I also did an, an entire vlog on just this book because there's just so much to take. Every time I, I talk about this, I could talk about something different. So yeah, this was the first book I hauled and um, I mean, I, I was looking forward to it so much. It was, it's one of my, it was one of my most antis anticipated nonfiction releases of 2021. And I read it immediately when I, when the package came to the door, I started it first page. I was in. I needed to read this. So yeah, that's the first book. The second book, um, I'm almost done. That This will be my first read for uh, June, basically. And that is Eat the Buddha, Life and Death in a Tibetan Town by Barbara Dimmick. Um, Barbara Dimmick is an author. She wrote Nothing to Envy, which is was a fantastic nonfiction about North Korea. Um, basically where she explores the, the, the hermit kingdom of North Korea. She has multiple interviews with defectors of North Korea um, and different statuses, different you know, status of elitism within the country. And she really just gives a wonderful general overview of the crisis in North Korea. And she does that again here with the, um, basically with Tibet and basically goes through how Tibet has been affected by China and prevented to become a country and just the chaos that the Chinese government is um, has created within the country and it's absolutely beautiful because it just it basically follows this one town and just the history of that town and how it's just been overrun by the Chinese and it's just super fascinating. Barbara Dimmick I absolutely love but she, because she's very good at giving you these j very readable um, just a beautiful narrative while also giving you like a nice comprehensive and easily understandable general history 
of um, a particular topic or a particular country. She's so good at that. So it's very good if you're interested about like if you were interested about North Korea, start with nothing to envy. If you're interested about Tibet and Chinese communism, starting with here would be a good idea. And then you can read more books that are much more specialized within um, within this general topic. But for her, it's so she's just so good at pulling you in and giving you the emotional side to these events. She really talks to all these. She has so many interviews with this with the. Um, with the people, she was able to even interview the Dalai Lama and just really gives you this beautiful insight into this town. And I've learned so much so far from this book about um, the, the, the devastation China has created upon, you know, Tibet. So yeah, I'm almost done with that. And this was my other haul from, um, well, well, from Book Deposit, I guess, yeah, I, I ordered these from Book Depository, maybe that, you can buy them from Book Depository. Book Depository is all, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. If you want to read these, but yeah, this so happy. Um, I think I'm gonna try and finish this today because it's just too good. I just I can't put it down. It's so fascinating. So, um, let me introduce the next book, which is actually not nonfiction. It's fiction, but this is the last book um, of which I've already read. Um, in this book haul, and that is Mask by Fumiko Inchi. I bought this because I needed a short read for a, a really long hair appointment. And this is basically about a, uh, a young woman who has been widowed and her relationship with her mother-in-law, mother -in her dead husband's mother, um, and while also working along with the, um, the two men who are basically in love with her and are, and are pursuing her in, 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 in a sense. And as they pursue her, it, it, it follows the perspective of the men because as they pursue her, they don't understand why she seems to be unable to escape the clasps of her mother-in-law. And this really ends, ends up exploring the concept of um, what it is to be a woman and like the bond between women and this concept that of love, which always is portrayed as a very feminine desire, but really even so, love still seems to only benefit men and this was incredibly haunting and incredibly chilling and I was really I was really taken by surprise by this book um, so yeah this was fantastic I'm really glad I finally uh, hauled this and read it so next um, two more nonfiction let's go back to nonfiction because these are two books that I have not read yet um, the first one is uh, Columbine by Dave Cullen and I've known about this book since before it was published, actually. Um, and when was that even published? Like more than 10 years ago, I feel. Uh, yeah, 2009 um, was when this was published. And it is, this is basically what you expect. It's a, a full account of the events of the mass shooting in Columbine by two of its students. And just goes into that. And this new edition um, includes um, a new epilogue where he, Dave Colin, goes back and discusses their most recent school shootings, um, such as like Sandy Hook and, and things like that. So he's really going back. Uh, what we had hoped would have um, a, would be, would have been a unique situation. He goes back and discusses that. So I'm really happy to have this in my, in my hand because I've known about this for, for forever. Um, because I used to read the blog. Of the cover designer and the cover design is by yeah, Henry Sien Yi and I don't know if this person still has their blog up but back then um, they did and they ex he 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 had his blog where he would describe his thinking process behind all of the book cover designs that he had designed and Columbine was one of them and he describes the concept of using this space to um, sort of give you the sense of oppression um, that was caused by this event. And it was absolutely fascinating. I loved seeing the slight um, differences in um, within the book covers, uh, the, the potential book covers before the final one was chosen. So um, if, if I, I mean, I'm excited for the book, but I think it's really fun that I'm finally reading this, this um, 
this final product of someone who, who worked really hard on the cover design. If his blog is still up, you should read it because it's a fascinating look at the concept of book cover design. And I think a lot of people would be really, a lot of people who, who are on book too would be very interested um, to see that. So um, the author of the book is Dave Colin, but the cover design is by Henry Seen, S-E-N-E, Y-E-E. -E -E -E. So if his blog is still up, definitely go check it out because um, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm super fascinated. I'm super excited to read this. I never bought it at the time because back then I didn't know I liked nonfiction. Um, I had very, I had read very little, just what I needed to read uh, for school, which even then was very little, like uh, John Hersey's Hiroshima, and then what else could I have read back then? I, I, I couldn't even say. Um, but this book has always been at the back of my mind for for years and years. So yeah, I finally decided to get this, and I'm really excited to read it. Um, that one I also got via a uh, book depository. Um, this next book I bought at a bookstore here in Tokyo, and that is The Unknown Story of Mao by Jung Cheng and John Holiday. Jung Cheng, you should know her um, because she was the author of the very famous Wild Swans, which I actually have not yet read. Um, that is definitely a book um, I will be reading eventually. I just have never been able to find a nice ed like edition I like. Um, especially in used bookstores where it hasn't just been like incredibly destroyed like torn pages and torn everything and like you know it's it's fine to have a book a little damaged but I'd rather do that myself than have one than buying it like that already this book is this book is really heavy it's like 750 pages um, but yeah this is basically um, a look at Mao who is Mao where did he come from um, how did he become who, who he did and what possessed him to be the cruel um, leader of the Chinese Communist Party that he was. So um, I've definitely been on a Chinese Communist Party kick lately. That's what the majority of the nonfiction I've been reading is. Um, I mean, the Tibet book is a continuation of that. Um, uh, the Even Burma, I mean, mentions how... Um, the Chinese has been looking to have their foot into the country so that they can uh, profit from it. Like everything I've been reading goes back to China lately because it's just a fascinating topic. There's so much uh, to learn. And so I bought this um, biography of Mao to read and I'm super, super excited. I think this will be much more, much more information that I need to know, but it'll be nice to have a, a to finally have um, a better idea of who Mao was. And this book is definitely not nice to him. Um, I've read, so I, I had my eyes on several Mao biographies and so I read briefly some reviews of people reading different ones and I said it on this one, but a lot of people do say there's a little bit too much. Jung Chang really shows her anger at Mao and she really takes the book maybe a little bit too personally. But I think, but I'm intrigued to see how so, and to what point. Um, but yeah, in any case, I hauled this. I'm really excited to read it. I don't think I'll be reading this immediately um, just because there's some other stuff I want to prioritize right now. And I, I don't want to read communism, 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 but communism back and, you know, back to back. I want to have a little bit of break between all of it. So once I read the Tibet book, I'll read something else and then I'll come back to this one. But yeah, still super, super excited about this. And then um, I also hauled a little bit of manga. Um, I'm trying to avoid manga unless it's a continuation of a series. Um, just because I already have too much, like all of this behind me. Like, I haven't read the majority of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I have like 400 unread manga volumes on my TBR. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, oh, well, I read, I read some manga in May. I can buy some manga now. But I read five books. And I'm hauling four, so it's not really the best in and out. <laughs> um, it, it's going to take a while to progress with my manga, but it is what it is. Um, but I bought the latest volume of Under Ninja by the author of I Am a Hero, so I bought volume five. So now that I have one through five, I think I'm going to finally read them. Um, because I always like to read, when I read manga, I like to really read it in East in sequence. I don't like to wait between volumes just because I, I, I start to forget things. Um, but now that that I have at least one through five. I can, I feel comfortable that I can finally start this. I also bought the latest volume, volume 10 of Cardcaptor Sakura, the, 
Oh, excuse me. Uh, the Clear Cut Edition, which was is the sequel to the original series. Um, so I have not started reading this yet, but um, these read so quickly, it's nice to, to have a lot of them at once because you can just speed through it. So I bought the latest volume of that. And then here's, here's what I didn't need to buy, but I did. Um, but I bought the very first two volumes of um, Blue Lock, which is a brand new soccer manga, volume 14 just came out. And the bookstore I had was sold out of it, so it seems very popular. And I love, I love soccer manga, so I decided to be stupid and buy these. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I love soccer manga. It's gonna like, I'm excited. And it's it's by Kodansha Magazine, and I really like this publisher when it comes to soccer. Like, um, they did Whistle, and they did um, The Night in the Area. I think they did both of those. Um, yeah, so I, I love when they do a soccer manga. It's so much fun. So yeah, those that's what I hauled in basically the month of May, actually. Um, unintentional. I, I, I never really try to aim for like, you know, May book haul, June book haul. I just kind of buy things as I go. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy. I'm even more happy because I've already read a few of these, and um, which means I'm not just willy-nilly buying things and putting them on my bookcase. But um, yeah, that's it. Um, and thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.